So yesterday's activity 414, we did two things. One, we started to decode Shakespeare's language. So what are simple items to look for, like punctuation cues and words that we know. And second, you got to practice speaking in Shakespeare's language by insulting one another with Shakespeare's fantastic lingo. So the idea of practicing a performance, the idea of decoding or interpreting what Shakespeare says, how is that preparing you to perform a scene from his comedy A Midsummer Night's Dream? Once you've got your purpose to be done, you can flip your bookmark to the back side. And the class bookmarks got cataloged out. 414 helps you practice four out of the nine concepts that your performance will be graded on. So 414 helps you practice concepts two and three. And it helps you practice concepts seven and eight. <laughs> One more time. 414 had you practice concepts 2 and 3 and concepts 7 and 8. I know, right? That's sweet. So once you've got the activity catalog, you can put that bookmark away. And we can open up Springboard to page 297. And you can go ahead and just use those two learning targets. So circle those verbs. Underline those nouns, that way we know what we're practicing. So this activity, we know we're going to collaborate or work together to understand the scene. And we're also going to begin summarizing Shakespeare's words so they make sense to you. Step one is telling us that we're going to be working as a class to create a close read of a scene from Midsummer Night's Dream. So if you take a look, the scene starts all the way at the bottom of page 297, but it extends to page 298. So you might want to flip it over, that way you can see. Well, then, it's got a little bit of work in it, not a lot. Now, yesterday we did this decoding process, and we only did it with a single line. Now we're going to take that process further and actually take a bite out of an entire scene. This is a process you have to do for your script. This is part of the actual assessment of being able to do this. So what you're going to see on the screen is the entire scene, but I have it on one of these slides. So you folks are going to have to do a little bit of back and forth. Okay? Now the first mark I'm going to have us make are these lines. Okay, now the reason why we're drawing these red lines where they are at is to separate what each character is saying. If you've never seen a script before, it can be kind of tricky to determine, okay, who's seen what line? When do I go? So the reason why we do these long horizontal lines is just to break up who's speaking when. So in this scene, we only have two characters that are having a conversation. Helena and Hermia. Now, in your in-question asked you, something about these two characters. First off, are these two girls, Helena and Hermia, friends? They are. They're best hey. friends. They're best. They're best friends. Before something happens. Okay? Now the end asked you, okay, why would these best friends have a reason to fight? If you can recall the summary, or if you can read that chart of the little stick people, you should be able to tell a really good reason why these two would fight. What do they have to argue about? Yeah, Luca? Boys. Straight up. They have to argue about boys. So we're going to be having that little background knowledge to help us kind of determine what the heck is going on. Now, the first thing I want you folks to do to start our decoding process, same as we did yesterday, I want you to either circle or highlight the following punctuation cues. Every comma in the scene, circle it or highlight it. Any question mark, circle it or highlight it. Any exclamation point, 
circle it or highlight it. Yes, it's tedious, but it can be extremely helpful when you're trying to determine what to do with your voice. Colons that pop up as well. They're exactly the same as the comma. It's a place to pause. Now, if you're still going through the process of finding those punctuation cues, that's totally fine. What's going to pop up on the screen is an almost exact note of what you folks did yesterday when you decoded. So you don't need to copy it. It's really just a reminder. So when you see a comma, that as a speaker is telling us that we have to take a pause. So you stop speaking, take a little breath, and then you start up again. When you see that exclamation point, that means that someone is either screaming because they're angry or they're shouting because they're excited or happy. So it can go either way. Now, the next thing we're going to do to decode is we're going to box in any words or phrases that we understand. So we either entirely know this word, or we've got a pretty good idea of what might be said. Or what might, uh, yeah, that works, what might be said. I'm going to here. Now, what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to read this piece aloud, but I'm not going to do anything dramatic with my voice. I'm pretending this is the first time I've seen it before, but I will make two inflections in my voice. Commas, I know I can pause there. It doesn't matter what the tone is. A comma is a pause, and I'll do that. The second inflection, the question mark. Naturally, your voice raises higher in pitch when you have a question. So you hear my voice do these two things. Everything else, though, it's going to sound pretty boring because I don't know what's happening yet. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. You folks box in any word or phrase that you pretty sure have an idea about. All right, so this is from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Oh, me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What? Have you come by night and stolen my left heart from him? Fine, be safe. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame? No touch of bashfulness. What? Would you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Five. Five. You counterfeit. You puppet. You. Puppet? Why so? I. That way goes the game. Now, I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, as with her personage, her tall personage, her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem, because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Speak. How low am I? I am not yet so low but that my nails can reach him to thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. I am a right name for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower. Hark. Again. Okay, now, we don't know every single word that these two characters are saying at all. But I can guarantee you that you know some. When we read yesterday's insults, and what we read today, did anything reappear? 
What was the repeat? What reappeared from yesterday? Nothing. Okay, you count it, you pop it. What else was the repeat, Isaiah? Oh, it's the very first line that was spoken by the first character. Anything else? Yeah, one more, ready? The idea of being cursed. So, what were these things that we were looking at yesterday? There we go, these were insults. So we already have background knowledge that what's being shouted at are insults. So, when people are insulting someone, are they angry or are they excited happy? Angry. You now know the tone of this entire piece. If we're firing insult after insult, these girls are angry. That's huge. That's a huge indicator. Okay? But aside from that, what are these phrases that we know that can help us really understand what's going on? If you're not on page 298, look at it. Then I want you to find line 300. Helena states, let her not hurt me. Now, I think you know what that means. And then a couple lines down, she said, let her not strike me. And I don't think what's telling the thing. So you, you tell me there's a girl that's going to hit another girl, and they're insulting one another? I want you to take one minute, talk with your family, and I want you to write down in your springboard what you think is happening. You know the tone is anger. There's insults being thrown, and one girl is threatening to physically hurt another. What do you think is going down? One minute. <laughs> 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 Okay, there's someone I'm hearing, most of you are exactly on the right track. So let's kind of get to the bottom line. Again, we don't know every single word, but we know there's a tone involved with anger, we know insults are being thrown, and someone's threatening another. Here's the actual scene in one photo. This is what's happening. Tell me what you see. What do you see, Ryan? From my side? Okay, two guys are holding a girl back. What else do you see? Yeah, Ruby? Um, are you starting, um, starting Okay, one of the girls is trying to attack the other one. Very good. What else? Yeah, Carla? Sure. Good point. The victim on the left is trying to get away from the attacker on the right. One more thought, I there. There's three guys? Yeah, there are two guys. You got it. All right, let's kind of do a breakdown of this image. Something else to consider are their facial expressions. The left-hand side, that's Helena. Her face is kind of in shock. She looks scared. Her body language is leaning back. She's got something to kind of use as a weapon. It looks like a flower. I don't think she's going to be able to do much with that. But you can tell in her body language, she's scared. The girl on the right, that's Hermia. That's the attacker. If you look at her face, she looks like she's ready to go for a serious rumble. She's got her teeth bared, like she's a lion or something. She's reaching out her hand to actually claw at Helena. One of the lines that we read literally is saying, what, you think I'm too short that I can't scratch your eyes out? That was one of the lines that she was saying, so look at that. Look what she's reaching for. She wants to get her and hurt her back. And like you folks are noticing, there's two guys that are literally holding this person back. I mean, she's like three feet up in the air, but man, she's going with all she's got. Look at that reach. It's not a Jordan reach, but it's pretty good. So bottom line, right now, this scene 
it's a cat fight. They're fighting over things. All right, now let's break it down a little bit more. In terms of the emotions that are going on, there's a lot happening, and you can pull it just from those two pictures or those two girls' faces. Oh, yeah, the girl on the right with the arm stretched off, there is rage there and there is hatred. She literally wants to kill Helena because she thinks Helena took her guy. You can see it just in that picture. But left inside Helena, there's confusion there. There's even scorn. She doesn't understand why her best friend hates her right now, so she's confused. She feels scorned or hurt because her friend thinks she stole the guy, and that's not true. Okay, what about the actual actions? There's a lot going on there. You got the one girl, Hermia, lunging after Helen on the left. They were screaming at each other. They weren't talking. They were screaming. And most likely, Helen would probably be running away from the situation. Can you think of someone who would go ahead and reach out to you, stand there, cry your eyes out, and you just stand there? No. You want to back away from the situation. Or for some of us, we stand our ground, and then we get ready to punch, okay? But none of us just stand your ground and say, hey, well, you do something. All right, now, even though, even though we don't know every single word that these girls are saying, you decoded this entire scene simply by looking at the punctuation cues, at the words that you know you have no background knowledge. You did it all. all right? Now, that's going to bring us to your actual script. Now, you folks are going to be getting your script at your family table. Each script is color-coded, so groups have different colors. What I'm going to do is lay these scripts at your family's table, and you're going to find your script with your name on it. You're not going to go into your group yet. I'm going to explain how this works, because this script is a huge portion of your grade for your assessment. So, once you get the script laid at your table, have yours in front of you, and be ready to look at the title page with me. If anyone's absent, just leave it at the table, and if Matthew's or I will come and grab it. That's okay. I have the wrong sign. All right. You folks should have your scripts in front of you. Let's go ahead and do the breakdown of this title page so you understand how this thing works. Right below where it says your group number, there's two notes. One lets you know that this is the only copy of the script that you get from me and Ms. Matthews. We will not push you out another one. We have no extras. This is it. The second note tells you if you lose it, where do you go? It says to go to sessionthesshape.com. You'd open up the EA Help tab. That's where you'll find the document. But it also gives you a page number. So some of you have a page number of 1 through 4. Some of you have a 9 through 11. The actual document of the script that you folks can open up on Test English Day, it's 28 pages. I don't want you printing out 28 pages. If you lose your script, you can ask your group member, hey, can you tell me some page numbers? That way you only print out what you need instead of printing out 28 pages. All right, now the next part of this title page, this is what everyone freaks out about. It's the cast of characters for your scene. You are not choosing any cast today. You are not picking what you want to be. You're not doing any of that. We're going to go through that process tomorrow because it takes time and it takes consideration. You may or may not have noticed there is a cast member called the director. We are not determining who is what today. Let's see how many of you pay attention to that. All right, now right below the cast of characters, you've got these two large boxes. Okay, the one on the bottom left says directions for annotations. These are the homework assignments, two of them. What I want you to do is go ahead and open up the packet, so turn that title page over, the colorful page. 
Now the actual script, it has three separate columns. The middle column, that's the actual script with the character's line. The left-hand column, the heading is titled Interpretation of All Characters Dialogue. You are responsible, as are your group members, for paraphrasing what every character is saying. Now, the way that we decode, we don't write line for line what people are saying. We get a sentence. We get a couple of phrases. That's it. We don't have to go line for line. Now, if you're worried about that, you're not sure, there's a great resource that I'm going to be showing you in two minutes. All right, now, the right-hand side of the script, it's titled Facial Expressions, Gestures, Stage Directions from My Character. When we determine our characters tomorrow, not today, you're going to have to figure out what your character needs to be doing from the beginning of the scene to the end. I can't tell you how many groups do their performance and have these derpy characters that are literally standing doing jack and like, what are you doing? They're literally just waiting for their line, randomly screen their line, and move on. I think if any of us saw that as a production or as a movie, we would think that, well, it sucks. You have to make sure when you're in the scene, do something that's natural. If no one's talking to you, maybe you don't even need to be on stage. If someone's talking to you, are you just like staring at an index card waiting for your turn to say a line? Probably not. You're listening to them. Maybe some kind of movement, you know? All right, go ahead, take that title page, turn it to the front. So that's how the page you're looking at again. Okay, the bottom right box, it's kind of understanding Shakespeare. Ms. Matthews and I have given you three wonderful resources for your interpretation of your scene. But the best, the greatest, is first one titled No Fear Shakespeare. Now what I want you to do is take your packet and flip it to the back. The back of your packet has three pages reserved showing you how to navigate this site. The reason why we put so much time into making this for you, huge hint, no fear Shakespeare gives you the interpretation of every single word and every single character. So you can literally go onto this site, find your particular scene in mind, read what it says, write in your own words, and the interpretation is done. There is no excuse to say you didn't understand it. None. All right? The other two are just as good, but a lot of people really refer to the first source over any of the others. All right, go back to the front. That last section, it's all the way at the bottom of your page. This is the grade that you'll receive for the packet. 20 points are based on your interpretation, which that entire column on the left-hand side is going to be filled. And you're going to receive 20 points based on your character's stage direction. So what will you be doing? Now, here comes the super, duper important, and that's why I turn the light off. We're going to write something on our packet first and foremost, and that's the due date. You officially have homework in your hands that is due next Wednesday. This is the day of the packet. If you're thinking it's too much, do not forget that the interpretations are 100% ready for you on a website. The actual time that you will spend on this packet, about an hour. You have six days to get this ready. I think you can spread out the time and make it happen. Now, here's the big deal. This is a huge one. Ms. Matthews and I, we're talking about it with the other English teachers. This is important, guys. This packet is essentially do or die for the end of the quarter. Here's why. If you do not have this packet 100% ready to go on Wednesday, you're going to be removed from your group and you will lose 20% of your grade. Now, you don't only get hit, so does your group. Because if you're removed, they don't have to recast you, meaning they have more work on their shoulders. Ow. This is a double whammy. I know there's kiddos in here that don't do their work on time. You're in trouble. You've got to do it. However, there's one safeguard. On Wednesday, let's say it's not ready to go, or you're one of those kids that's scrambling, I've got three minutes, she hasn't checked it yet. Trust me, Ms. Matthews and I are going to see it, and we're going to notice that. If your group decides to save you, they can. 
but they can also choose to dismiss you. So let's say on Wednesday this thing isn't ready. This napkin and I come by, we see that it's not ready. We're going to look at your group and we're going to ask your group, do you want to save them or dismiss them? Saving you means that you can stay in the group. However, you still receive the 20% deduction of your score because you weren't prepared. But saving you also means that your group doesn't have to take on the extra bulk of work to have your character taken care of. However, if you are officially dismissed by your group members, this is what happens to you. You end up having to receive a new script and you perform a monologue by yourself. It's the last line that Robin says to the audience and it's a page long. Don't let it happen. If you are stuck in a solo performance because you were not prepared, don't assume that you have failed. You have a chance of redeeming yourself, but you just have to really knock your performance out of the ballpark. So bottom line here, don't screw up. Do your part, do your work, and be an asset to your group. So the rest of the time, we're going to be focusing on you starting that decoding of Shakespeare's scene. Now, there's two main resources you can use. Your cell phone, which is data, and, or, the Shakespeare dictionaries that are on my desk, the pockets you saw yesterday. You are not picking roles because you do not have the time to do that today. We deal with that tomorrow. You can look all you want, but you are not picking it and you shouldn't talk about it. You're trying to figure out what the heck is not seen. Alright? Now, if you can't remember who your group members are, these things are color coded. So just find the people that have the same color as you, get together, and start a work it. Ready? Do it.